We are talking about trigonometry again today. Uh, you guys are going to be able to uh, hopefully refresh your memory on how to find lengths of sides and measures of angles of right triangles. This is going to be a recap from your geometry days, um, you know, relating to trig and all that, all that good stuff, okay? Uh, we are going to be going back and forth between your sheet of paper. There will be some examples that you'll do on your sheet of paper, but there will be some notes that you guys do on um, this printed note paper that I have and I'm about to hand up to you now, okay? So just make sure that you... You know, you are going back and forth. I'll try to remind you to tell you this is on your paper or this is on the note paper. Okay? So, all right, so trigonometry that is the study of lengths and angles in triangles, okay? Try three sided figures, triangles, okay? In this particular example, if you recall the breakdown of a right triangle, you have your hypotenuse. This is um, on the actual, this is actually on the note paper, note paper, note paper, okay? In a right triangle, the side that's across from your 90 degree angle is called your hypotenuse. You guys remember that? Okay, good. And then you have your legs, which are either going to be your adjacent side or your opposite side, depending on which angle. Which angle is going to allow uh, CB to be your opposite side and AB to be your adjacent side? Which angle are they referencing? Which angle, AB or C? Might be 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. It's going to be A. So it's going to be A. Okay. Okay. So A is the angle in which you're able to determine that this side is your opposite side because it's across from that angle. And AB is your adjacent side. What's another word for adjacent? The side, okay? The side, you can even say, another word for the side. Next to, okay? So depending on the angle that they give you, what they're asking you to find, the side that forms the angle with the hypotenuse is always your adjacent side because it's right next to the angle. It's right beside the angle, okay? Questions on this? Come back to you. You remember those words? Those words were associated with something related to geometry. What was it? Never quite hit. Cosine, sine, and tangent. Yes, that's when that came into play. We are going to be talking about that today. Okay? Now, the three. Um, okay, so you have three trigonometric ratios. In a right angle triangle, they are defined as sine, cosine, and tangent. And ratio means what was another word for ratio? Definitely. No, not proportions, but you're in like a one, two. So another word for ratio. What's another word for ratio? A fraction. It is a fraction. So when you are identifying the three trig ratios, um, sine, cos, and tangent is going to be a fraction. And it's the fraction of your different sides that you have. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. You would have learned back in your geometry days of something called Sokotoa. You guys remember that? Yeah. Yes. Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. That's so good. So, okay. This is something. This is something that is not in your reference book. So you, I mean, but it's something that you have seen before back in geometry. Okay. So it's just a way to help rem, uh, help you remember, you know, which sides go with sine, which sides go with cosine, which sides go with tangent. Basically breaks down the letters for you right there. Okay. Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. Oh, I thought it was so. I caught. Oh no. 
So looking at the notes, okay, looking at the print notes, you guys see that there's a table down at the bottom, correct? Mm -hmm. It says to complete the table. So you have three different right triangles. And based off of the angle, which is labeled alpha, that little symbol that looks kind of like the cursive A is actually the symbol for alpha. It's a Greek letter. It represents our angle. Based off of that angle, you have to basically state which one of these um, sides and each one of these triangles is the hypotenuse, which one is the opposite side, and which one is the adjacent side. Okay? Based off of the pictures. All right? So, for example, if this was my triangle and it was labeled Q, R and S, well, my hypotenuse would be, or R and be careful, triangles are made up of segments, so it would be segment RQ. That would be my hypotenuse. My adjacent side would be segment SQ, and my opposite side would be segment RS. That's what you guys are doing in this table, okay? I'm going to give you about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, to complete this table. Make sure that if you need to, label your side so that way you don't get confused. Which one's the opposite? Which one's the adjacent? So on and so forth. Okay. We're going to look at this example. It says for each triangle, we're going to write down three trig ratios for the angle theta in terms of the size of the triangle. So we're doing, this, we're doing a similar thing. It's the process that we were doing before, okay? Here's your triangle. There's theta. I want you guys to do it again on your paper, in your notes, on your notebook paper. Do this now. So you're writing down the uh, three trig ratios. So you need the three trig functions. What are the three trig functions? Sine, cosine, and tangent. And in order to be able to make sure everyone should have a theta beside each one of these, because it's sine of an angle, it's cosine of an angle, it's tangent of an angle, you need to know what your sides are. What are your sides? Which one's the opposite side? A, B. What's your adjacent? C, B. So this makes this your hypotenuse. And we know sine is what over what? Opposite over So it's going to be opposite, which is A, B over C, A. No need for the segment symbol here because we're talking about the actual links themselves. Okay, the ratio is the links themselves. Okay? That's what you have to do for this. Cosine of theta is what over what? It's going to be CB over CA. And if you put uh, BC or AC, it's still correct, okay? They're interchangeable. And then tangent? BA over CB. Good stuff. Questions on the ratios before we actually get into the, the math part of this? Have we, have we cleared up any issues with adjacent and opposite? Okay, so back to your hard copy notes. Actually, I lied. Keep it open where we were, but go back to your notebook paper. I want you guys to do this example right here. I want you to find the value of sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta. Value. What does value mean? Actual number, okay? So in this particular case, you're giving me sine, cosine, and tangent using the numbers. We're not using sides anymore. We're using the actual numbers, okay? So do that for this example, and then we'll actually go forward. Okay, so our hypotenuse is 5, which means the sine of theta would be what? It would be 4 over 5, because 4 is our opposite side, 5 is our hypotenuse, making 3 our adjacent cosine. And tangent, four over three. Okay, there you go. Using numbers. Now, to go a step further, if you know one acute angle and the length of one side of a right angle triangle, you can find two things. You can find the length of the other sides using trig ratios, and you can find the third angle by using the sum of interior angles of a triangle. Now, the three angles in a triangle, all three of those angles add up to equal what number? 180. 180, okay? So if you're given an angle already in a right triangle, then you can easily find the third angle by just adding them and subtracting it from 180. Now, to find the length of the unknown sides of this triangle ABC, which you guys do have to fill in on your own paper, 
I'm sorry, the printed paper, okay, is my suggestion to you is if they give you a side or they give you an angle, use that to find everything else. Don't use something that you've already found to find something else. Because if you find the first thing wrong, you have no chance of getting the second thing wrong. Okay? So, we're going to use the angle that's given to us, which is angle B. It's 30 degrees. In order to find my other two sides, I need to know exactly what they are. AC, is that my opposite side, my adjacent side, or my hypotenuse? It's the opposite side. A is your what? It's your hypotenuse. It's across from the what? Right angle. So the side across from right angle is always your hypotenuse. So if I'm looking for that side, that AC, is my opposite side, and I'm given my hypotenuse, what trick ratio is that? Is that sine, is that cosine, is that tangent? It's sine. The sine, so, is so and so, O and H. So I'm going to set up my equation to solve for AC. It's always sine of our angle, and we're using 30 degrees, equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. We don't know the opposite side, so I'm just going to label that AC, and our hypotenuse is H. Any questions up to this point? Where that came from, how that came about? So I'm going to solve for AC. How do I solve for AC? Multiply by A. Get rid of that denominator. Okay? Or if you want to, you could make sine 30 put it over 1 and cross multiply, either way, work the same way. So basically you'll have 8 sine 30 equals AC. And since we're given our answer to three significant figures, we're going to type that into our calculator. So we pull out our calculator, and we type it in exactly how we see it. 8, we're sine. Above the comma, which is above the 7. And then we type in our number, close off the parentheses. And when we click enter, we'll get our answer of 4. Does anybody not get 4? Did you get a negative number out of curiosity? If you got a negative number, first off, that should right there signal to you that that's, that can't be possible. Why can't it be negative 7 point whatever? Because there's no negative number. Exactly. There's no such thing as a negative segment length. Okay, it has to be positive. When you're doing trig, um, when you're doing trig equations, trig ratios, you want to make sure that your mode, click mode is right beside your second button, is in degree. Because aren't we dealing with 50 degrees or 30 degrees? So you want to make sure you're in degree mode. So all you do is you go down to degree, make sure you click it to highlight it, and then quit out of this. So that way, when you go back and type it in again, you actually get four. So whenever you're doing a trick problems, make sure you're in degree mode. If you're using one of my calculators, my other classes switch between radian and degree, so you always want to make sure you double check. Okay? If your calculators ever reset, like if you have to trade out the batteries, it always defaults back to radian. So you got to make sure it's in degree. Okay? All right. So our answer here is four. Now we're going to do the same thing to find the other side, okay? That's the what side? Adjacent. What trick ratio do you want to use to find it? To find BC. Let's use cosine. Yes? Can we do Pythagorean theorem? You can do Pythagorean theorem. My only objection against Pythagorean theorem is that you have to use what you found. So if you did this incorrectly, you have no chance of getting the other side right. I mean, but it would work. It would work. As long as you did it right. So, we'll have cosine of 30 degrees equals what over what? Over 8. And to find CB, we're just going to multiply. So, we'll have 8 cosine 30 equals CB. We'll type that in. And we find out that CB is about 
6.928. So if it's 6.928, we are rounding this to three significant figures, so this is going to be 6.93. And both of these are in centimeters, so I forgot to write that in there. Don't want to lose that unit penalty because we're not putting our units. Questions? this next example. It's the next example in your guided notes. I want you guys to do this one on your own. But you do have to create your own triangle first, okay? So do that right now, and then I'm going to just check back in and make sure we got the right triangle before we start finding all types of numbers. Okay? All right. And what do you think that symbol up there means that's on top of the E and on top of the F? Angle, okay? That notation means angle. You guys got your picture? you a right triangle, yes? What did you label the right angle? E. e. And does it really matter where F and D are? No. I'm going to put F down here and D up here. It's fine. If you didn't have F and D in this spot, it's still okay as long as F was labeled 50 and D, E was labeled 7. Okay? So if you had F at the top instead, the 7 would be on the bottom. All right? So I want you to find the size of angle D. I want you to find D, F, and E, F. And make sure if you have to round, you round the three significant figures. So to find the size of uh, D, angle D, simple enough, right? What you do? Oh, is it sine? Oh, there's no sign. Oh, okay. there, there's no sign. So I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, so this was talking about angle, angle D. Size, not size. <laughs> how do you find them? So how do you find these? What do you do? At 90 and 50. At 90 50, and that gives you 140, and then? 180 degrees. Which is? 40. 40 degrees. That's angle D. Good stuff. Okay, now we have to find EF. EF is located right here down at the bottom. Okay? If you use angle 50, um, how would you set it up if you use angle 50? Tan 50 equals 7 over EF, okay? Now I am going to solve this problem doing it this way because there's one thing I do want to point out because this could happen to you. When you set it up, your variable, what you're looking for is actually at the bottom and not at the top, okay? And that's fine if it's at the bottom, it just means you have to do one extra thing, okay? A lot of students tend to they want to divide by seven, but it doesn't it doesn't quite work that way. Okay? You can multiply both sides by the denominator, but you can't divide both sides by the numerator. That doesn't work. So we still go about multiplying both sides by the denominator. So we'll have EF times the tangent of 50 equals 7. And this time, instead of multiplying 7 by the tangent of 50, we're actually going to divide. So EF is going to be 7 divided by the tangent of 50. And we type that into our calculator. Now if you use angle D, which is 40, you still would probably use tangent, but you'll just end up multiplying 7 by the tangent of 40. And you'll still get the same answer, which is what? 5.87? All right, and then to find DF, what do you do? Somebody set it up. Cosine 40. Okay, cosine 40. 7 over DF equals 7 over DF. 7 over DF, similar to the other one. I divided 7 by cosine 40. Multiply both sides. Divide. And if you notice, every line or every problem that we've done, I've always written that line prior to you typing it into your calculator. Because who knows what could happen from this to you typing it into your calculator. You might get a number that's completely wrong. Say you forget to change it back to degree mode. Or you end up typing in um, 8 over the sign of 40 because you were rushing. At least this way you can get the accuracy point by putting this down. It does not mean the right decimal. What is DF? Questions? All right. 
This one, you're doing it on your notebook paper. You're doing it on your notebook paper. So transition back to your notebook paper. I want you guys to answer this question. I'm going to give you about seven minutes. Seven minutes. All right, so we have to represent this in a diagram, okay? Now, when you're representing this in a diagram, no, they're not expecting you to draw like a tree and then like a wall and all that's in the ground or anything like that, but they do want you to make sure that you recognize this is a right triangle and that you do label everything properly. What should be labeled seven? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, what should be labeled 50 degrees? bottom corner. So 50 degrees here. All right. And that would be part A. Okay. And then it says find the height of the wall of the window sill above the ground. Okay. That means you're looking for which, which piece of information. You labeled your triangle. Okay, that's fine. So you label this A? Okay. So yes, to find part B, you are looking for that side, that perpendicular side. What did you use to, to solve this? Sine, can you set it up for me, please? And did you end up dividing seven by a sine 50 or multiplying? Stuff, and you got an answer of three six. Did you guys get that? Yeah. Awesome stuff. Okay, then part C is asking you to find uh, how far is the foot of the ladder from the wall, which means you're looking for the bottom piece. Somebody different. Um, I did. I did sine forty equals. Well, I labeled mine different. I got BC. Got you. Oh, oh, over seven. Um, multiply seven times sine forty, and you'll get four four point four nine nine. So I just put. You guys see that? Yeah. Did she put that extra zero? Oh, okay, that's what it is. Questions there? All right. Back to your notes, the, the printed ones. If you know the length of two sides of a right angle triangle, you can find the length of the other side uh, by using the Pythagorean theorem. And then you can find the size of the two acute angles by using ratios. Now, this one's a little bit different, okay? Because you're looking for angles. So there won't be any multiplying or dividing here, but it's actually going to be doing something different. Does anybody remember to find an angle? Mm -hmm. You know what that's called? Oh, it's called like, um, like not octagonal, like inverse. It is the inverse. It is the inverse. So you're going to be using inverse of your trig functions. Those are located by pressing the second button and then the trig uh, function that you want. Okay. So by pressing the second button and any one of these three trig functions, you can get the inverse. You use inverse whenever you're looking for an angle. Okay. Ms. Anderson. Yes. All right. So we're trying to find the size, the sizes of the two acute angles, which would be A and B. One thing. You guys keep in mind, this is a triangle, okay? It should make sense. So in other words, the longest side should be across from the largest angle, and the smallest side should be across from the smallest angle, okay? So basically, if you saw them for whatever reason, you end up getting a number that's bigger than 90 degrees, you already know that you did something wrong, because these angles should be acute, okay? So let's start about with finding angle A. You still use your trig functions. Label your sides. Since you're given 10 and you're given 15, why not go ahead and use them? Do less work. Smarter, not harder. 10 is the what side? 10 is the what side? Oh, uh, that's to angle A. The opposite side is across from angle A. And 15 is the what? Hypotenuse. What trig ratio are we going to use to find angle A? Sine. Sine. So we set it up. The sign of our angle. This time we don't have a number there. We're actually going to put our variable because we're looking for angle A. And the ratio is going to be 10 over 15. So then to actually solve for A, we're not going to divide both sides by sign. You can't really do that. That's when you do the inverse. So it's written 
excuse me, like this, and it's exactly what should show up when you type it into your calculator. You do the sine inverse of 15 divided by, or 10 divided by 15, excuse me. And we are rounding this to three significant figures. 41.8. Three significant figures. Remember, we start with the first non significant, uh, first non zero number. Question on that. How do we find angle B? Mm hmm. We can do 90 plus the angle and then subtract that from 180. Or we could do what trig function will we use to find angle B? We can definitely do 180 minus the other two angles, but to find if I wanted to do it using trig, to find angle B, 10 would be the what side. And 15 would still be your hypotenuse, so you would use what trig functions? Cosine. Okay? Do this real quick. What is uh, 180 minus 90 minus the answer we got before?
create triangles within that. Did everybody see that right triangle there? How long is the side? And this one here? Four. What trig ratio am I going to use to find that angle? Tangent. And is it going to be two over four or four over two? So to find the angle, you're going to take the inverse, and you're going to find out that that angle is 